Okay, we're here in the Speedland workshop, Kevin Fallon's garage. <laughs> Kevin Fallon, Dave Dombrow, the founders of Speedland, the newest, hottest, best trail shoe ever. I guess uh, let's start with, um, was this the place where the vision came together for Speedland? We see some of the, the early prototypes here. Maybe uh, give us a quick tour of the, of the <laughs> workshop here and, and talk about how a this, very quick tour. This, this space though seems like it was significant to the development of the show. This is where we did all the work, right? Yeah, yeah it is. I think, you know, we came out of Speedhack where we'd been doing, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff, combining, brands, combining technologies, trying to challenge ourselves. And that gave us a really different way of working mm -hmm. that led right into, we just went into making a model of, of our first uh, version of the SL. Yeah. And I think the aesthetics of it, a lot of things about it came about just from working in a space like this. Yeah. And partially, as you were just saying, there aren't that many fancy tools here. So it was really like, what can we do here? Yeah. Not necessarily relying on technology it was more, how do we just get an approximation of what yeah. we're after? And you just explained that this man cave, to use your word, came about when you <laughs> built the deck that's above us. Right. And I'm sure that was a, yeah. an intentional addition that you uh, requested <laughs> with the contractor. Yeah, oh yeah, I needed space yeah. for some yeah. some gear and this was yes. it. And then not knowing it would become the hack shack. Yeah. That's what we hack wound shack. up calling it. You yeah. gotta get a sign for the wall. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's talk about the shoe. Obviously this is the SLPDX, the first model uh, from Speedland. You guys launched how many months ago now was it? We launched Six. in June. Yeah, so last well, coming up on seven months. Year, so last year, yeah. Last year, yeah. so yeah, six, six months ago, yeah. the shoe has been out and on the market now. Right. And uh, you guys are just getting started. It's the, just the beginnings of what will hopefully be a lifelong, career-long endeavor here with Speedland. Um, the shoe is totally novel and we wanna talk all about how that is. And so we've got all the different components here. I'll sort of defer to you guys. Where's the best place to start? Should we go bottom up or top down? We usually go bottom up. Yeah, let's do that. So maybe we'll start with, the, with this piece. This is the Michelin uh, outsole here. And there's a few unique things about this. One, it's made with a textile web. You can actually kind of see the, the textile there. And that lets us get really, really thin with it, which is cool. It's like a bike bike tires get really, really thin with a, a textile web. So basically you see that embedded in and then combine that with cuttable lugs. So each one of these lugs can actually be cut with a, a pair of clippers and you can shorten them from six to three millimeters. Um, also you can cut the drainage, which is cool. You can see here that it's basically cored out on the backside. So if you cut these, you know, you're running a lot of rivers, you might want to cut that drainage permanently. So that is the uh, cuttable blocks Michelin Michelin. Talk about the cuttable blocks a little bit more yeah. because this is totally... Well, maybe we actually cut one and show you. Sure Kevin, you grab some? Yeah, here. You know, we'll show you. Clip a, we'll clip them and show you how, how easy it is. So uh, the way they designed them, each lug has that step on there. And so you can take a vertical cutting pliers or a wire cutter. That works as well. This is just a little easier. Put it on that first step and then just squeeze it and it cuts off really cleanly. And so you can either zonally lower lugs or do the whole yeah. thing all at once. And so the idea behind this though is tunability, right? That's is right. to be able exactly. to customize the footwear not only to your personal preferences as trail runners, but also to the terrain that you're gonna be using it on. So right. for example, deeper lugs are probably better for wetter, softer ground, exactly. maybe more technical terrain where you need a little bit more cushioning or a little bit more protection, shorter lugs for drier. Yeah. Harder trail. If you're harder. mostly running, say, in Southern California or Arizona or somewhere, you, you probably would consider cutting them just right out of the gate. Yeah, if that was the. But totally new. I mean, this has never happened in footwear, at least from to my knowledge. No, it came from the mountain bike industry. So, that. mountain bike tires, uh, Michelin was doing it on to customize the tires for downhill racing. And so, we thought that was really novel and really you know, really cool what they were doing to get more performance out of it. So it's like, why couldn't you bring that same technology that they were doing on the tires directly into footwear? And that's where this came from. Yeah. So next up is what? Doesn't it go? 
Next up would actually be this piece here, which is the, the bottom uh, midsole that, that basically lays, well, this is the other foot, but basically lays right in there yeah. in the chassis. Um, and this is a high rebound EVA. And it, this one, nobody really sees because it gets trapped in there. Um, some cool details that probably nobody knows about is we put some of our favorite trails uh, embedded in there. So a little, uh, little secret little there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, nobody will ever see that. But anyway. Well, that's um, cool though, because yeah. it's sort of like, uh, at least it, some people will have this awareness now and it makes it even a little bit more special. And for you guys, the creators of the product, to have yeah. your favorite trails on that lower that's midsole right. is pretty cool. Kind of yeah, and some of them are local to here and some of them are local to where I grew up in San Diego. So some of them are Southern oh. California trails and some are uh, Minnesota. So yeah, we got, we got them kind of all over the place. Summer yeah. Colorado. So anyway, uh, that that's the high rebound piece that goes in there. Um, where do you want to go? The upper next? goes on. The upper goes on top of that. So it sit, you know, on top of that lower midsole, and the upper, of course, has the the tri fit wrap. That's you know really a result of us working so closely with Boa. Yeah. I think we were just showing you we. Our first proto looked pretty different. You know, our location was different and how we were activating the straps was, was a bit different. And to get from here to there, I would say was really iterative process directly yeah. with BOA. They're the experts at, at their product. We knew what we wanted to do from a fit perspective, but being able to work with their fit lab and, and really refine this was a big, big part of how we got the great fit out of this yeah. product we did. So let's talk more about the upper in a sec, but I think since we're going bottom up, yeah. mm -hmm. um, obviously there's other things to talk about here, but I think, you know, just looking at the shoe as somebody who's been in trail running and been in running for a long time, it has a very unique look to it, right? The midsole is not exposed. You see the, um, the outsole here first and this moccasin mm -hmm. stitch that mm -hmm binds it to the upper, and instead of a traditional midsole, you guys have sort of like a drop-in midsole and yeah. uh, a carbon plate. So talk about how those two things interact and how you came up with that design. Sure. Well, there's a couple things that really came out of function, I would say, that drove this one. And one is we didn't want to glue the carbon plate in, into the shoe. As soon as you glue this to a midsole or something else, it's more like a laminate structure. Uh -huh. And this is such a unique material in that it's quite stiff this way, but it's flexible the other way. But as soon as we glue it, you lose that element. So we, through a series of just trial and error, found a way of attaching it onto the bottom of the midsole that allowed it to be um, sturdy and, and reliable and secure, but allowed this kind of independence where I think I'll, I'll break out this because it's kind of a fun demo and easy to understand. When you have a stack of post-it notes, they bend quite easily. Yeah. Each one slides across each other as it's needed. As soon as I f hold that other end and try to bend it, it buckles and yeah. it does weird things. And, you know, on a road shoe, it's one thing to have a completely rigid plate and you're rolling through and it's what, you're going, it's what you're going for actually there's more agility required and off camber things and trail that just doesn't make that rigid idea work mm -hmm. and so we were really trying to lean into this unique material and highlight it as much as possible and same for the p-backs you know as soon as you laminate something to it it changes the foam quality yeah. too so really the design of the removable plate was driven by the idea of can we tune this but also how do we optimize the feel for each of those materials. So there's a function to it, but there's also a very unique performance element to it also, because we you think can so. take the plate out yes. and it creates yeah. these two different running experiences where with the plate in, it feels a little bit snappier, a little bit faster yeah. to sure. use. Uh, maybe a clumsy word, but then when you take it out, the shoe is a lot more flexible. Right, you yeah. get more feel. And it even says that underneath, it says remove plate for max flex feel. Yeah. You know, so if that's what you're going for um, in different circumstances, you can definitely do that. And we've heard it on both sides, sometimes for an easier, shorter run. We've heard athletes take it out to just make it softer, yeah. more flexible. That's what I do. But yeah. also yeah. like for scrambles and real agility yeah. challenges, we've also heard better without the plate. Yeah. So, But then when you go into something higher tempo, if you're doing intervals or some sort of higher intensity workout, that plate makes a huge difference. Yeah. So. 
the, the, the removability is such a cool feature of the shoe. And we had we had some experience with this actually from basketball. I mean, there are a few high performance products in basketball that have used this. A Kobe had a couple of models drop ins that had not, drop -ins. not removable plate, not a removable <laughs> plate. But I meant making yeah. a performance product with a drop in midsole is not that easy right. um, because and the fit's got to be so well. You can't have any slop inside, but it feels a lot better because that foams right up against your foot. Yeah. It's not underneath a strobel on a sock liner and glue. Beautiful. That's a big difference. So talk about the, the P-Box midsole, Tim. So yeah, so this is a unique material. So it's super critical p -back. So there's a lot of p backs used through the industry, and you see it in a, mostly you see it in a lot of road shoes, um, like the Next Percents and different different things. But those break down quite quite fast. Um, this super critical is a different formulation and it doesn't break down. So, you, you know, you can easily get the compression sets much different on this. So you can easily get five, 600, 700 miles yeah. without seeing much wear at all yeah. um, to this, to this. You guys were at my house last week yeah. and we looked at a pair of shoes that I think probably has 400 miles on it. And you yeah. pulled the midsole out. It looks like, almost doesn't new. Even look like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, typically you'll see, you know, the toes dented yeah. in and a heavy loading under the ball of the foot. And we didn't see that in your yeah. pair. So, it's an amazing it's a, material. It's a good material. Yeah. It's a really high quality As somebody foam. Who doesn't know that much about the footwear industry? Like the best way that I can put it is that it feels like it's a high quality material, right? It's just like when you uh, are out running or just like when you're touching it, when you're interacting with the material just now, you can sort of feel that it's just, it's not the typical foam that you would find in a running right. shoe. Right. It's not a typical foam. PBAX is definitely a higher engineered polymer. Yeah. It's also nice in the sense that it's pretty stable across a broad temperature range. EVAs tend to get hard when they're cold. Uh, I don't know if you, you know, yeah. noticed that in uh, running shoes well, that I've worn in the past, that, yeah. but like they can get pretty hard yeah. when it's cold outside. And that matters when it's like right now when it's 25 out. Yeah, yeah that plays a big difference. The ground's in already hard enough. Yes. The body's a little right. bit more rigid. Yes. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of nice qualities yeah. about p that yeah. make it excellent for this. Mm -hmm. And by putting it inside, sidewalls are protected, doesn't get the abrasion. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the other shortcoming of some of the, I think we can all agree the shortcomings of the p road shoes, they tend to be a little unstable. Mm -hmm. So by kind of capturing that sidewall with a firmer material, you don't get that same instability. Wow, wow. Every little detail. So let's uh, work our way up and talk about the upper now. I think yeah. Yeah. just subjectively as uh, somebody who's been running in the shoe now for several months, uh, I can say that the fit of this shoe is better than any other trail shoe I've ever worn. And I think you guys have received similar feedback from other customers and athletes who are on the team. Talk about how you achieve such an incredible fit with the Opera, the SLPDX. Boy, a fit was definitely very important to us. And I would say that we did take a lot of influence from uh, cycling, as you can see, maybe. Uh, so I think the fit, it's, it's all about the system of the fit. And so some of that is with the strapping and the idea that you can zonally um, tighten down areas. So with this, uh, you can zonally tighten down and loosen the front, or you can zonally tighten down or loosen the back and you can pop to release. And with that, you know, we should talk about, I guess, BOA and the LI2 dials because these dials really allow you to get that precision, that precision click that's, you know, you're, you're, you're tightening by, by millimeter increments here. So that was super important to us. And I think with that combined with the, the booty fit underneath, which is also constructed of, uh, with a Dyneema knit, uh, it's giving you kind of that ultimate sensation of having the snugness that you want, but you can get, you know, the adjustability that you need through the bow as well. So pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and also there. just to make sure we highlight it, you can also get twist backwards. So for yeah. example, if you're 60 miles into a hundred mile race, your foot might be getting a little bit swollen or just generally want to, uh, reduce a little bit of the, the tightness of the fit. You don't have to stop and sit down and untie and retie your shoe. Right. You just twist yeah. the dial And that's unique. Or... There's not a trail totally show on the unique. market that yeah. uses these dials. And a very valuable application yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the key. We're not trying to put anything on there just for the sake of making the shoe expensive or just for the sake of putting new tech on there. We want to make sure that it's working for the athletes the way we hope it will. And th that is definitely a case where we're, yeah. we're hearing that back, that they appreciate the zonality and to be able to do it so quickly. Okay, that's the SLPDX from Speedland. 
the best footwear company in Portland, Oregon, among, among a few right. competitors, yeah, Dave Dombrow, Kevin Fallon, the founders and creators of this awesome product. Uh, we're super excited to, to be working with you with uh, Free Trail, and thanks for giving us a tour of the garage. Likewise, yeah. happy to have you. <laughs> All right. Great to be partners.